Hey, okay, we are here at Studio SX, South by Southwest 2009. I'm Christina Warren from the unofficial Apple weblog, or TUAW.com, and I'm here with Jeffrey Kamakoff, the uh, central, cre the, cre the chief creative officer. That's whatever. CCO at Threadless. I do some stuff. You do some, some t-shirts. Some very cool t-shirts, Threadless, Threadless.com. So Threadless is, is pretty big at this point. Uh, I mean, I, comparatively to when we started, that's a fair statement, I think. Yeah. yeah. You guys have been going on for what, about us? Uh, It'll be 10 years next year. It'll be 10 years next year. Yeah. So, just a little background for anybody who's not aware of Threadless. Threadless, just the, the five seconds, 15 second pitch. Five to 15 seconds. Uh, There's so, a Threadless is an ongoing online uh, open call for t-shirt submissions. Uh, designers submit t-shirts. The uh, community, we're about 900,000 right now. Uh, scores and uh, that creates like a pool of the highest scoring designs. We choose the shirts to print, um, pay the designers uh, 2500 and uh, print the shirts, sell them from the site, nine new shirts a week. How did I do on time? I think, that, I think that was good. I think it was good. Okay, so how has kind of the, the vision of Threadless evolved or has it in um, you know, the almost decade that, that um, you guys have been around? Um, it's pretty much, it's the same idea. Um, I mean, it was a pretty simple core idea. Uh, over time, you know, in responding to what the community wants and um, what our customers need and stuff like that, we tend to um, sort of like shape things a little bit differently, but at the core of it, it's still the same idea of, um, you know, creating a uh, creative conversation with, uh, that was awesome alliteration, <laughs> um, you know, with our uh, community designers um, and just being able to respond to what they want. and. Uh, but it's still the, the core idea of submitting designs, scoring designs, you know, building a creative community and, you know. And having very cool shirts. Yes. The coolest shirts. The coolest shirts. I don't mean to, you know, correct you. <laughs> coolest shirts. The coolest shirts. Right. All right, we've got that. We've got that. We always say that, you know, all the people that work at Threadless, which we have, I think, be, I think like 70 or 80 now. I mean, we're basically like 70 or 80 people in a community of 900,000. So. I mean, we don't really run the community. We just kind of manage the uh, parameters of it and just kind of facilitate it, so. So as Threadless has been around and as it's kind of evolved, it's come from being kind of a thing where it's a design contest where people can get shirts to being a brand in and of itself. You know, there's a kind of a Threadless brand, a Threadless style shirt. And sure. how has that changed the community dynamic? How has that, or has it changed it? Um, I mean, I guess like, uh, Threadless as a brand, um, it sort of evolved into a brand. It was just sort of like a side project. Um, I think what's interesting is that uh, it became a brand when um, it got more popular with customers, not necessarily with um, just general community people. Um, in, the beginning of, in the beginning of Threadless, there was a lot more variety of designs. And I think that as we started to get like hits, you could call it, um, that, so, that started to shape what um, people's expectations were, um, or what they thought our expectations were with the art. So it kind of started to create what people interpreted as like a threadless style. Um, but uh, for the most part, like we don't, we don't really have a style. Like we're always trying to look for something different. But um, so it's it's interesting. I think that you could take ten different people who are you know hardcore threadless uh, lovers and say what's a threadless style, and they're going to describe ten different. Um, 10 different styles. So I think what's unique about us is that our brand kind of can be something different for every person depending on you know, how they use it or what their tastes are. Okay, but you have seen kind of a difference in maybe what's submitted or what's created based on what's been popular? Has that been yeah, that at all? Um, I mean, it's, it's pretty normal, I guess. Uh, something gets really popular and then a lot of people figure, okay, that's, a, that's what they're looking for. So we get a ton of submissions that are along those lines. Um, so what we're, you know, basically I think what embodies our brand the most is we're looking for the next thing. You know, right. Um, something that doesn't look like all the things we've done before. And sometimes, you know, the trends kind of come in and out and there's certain things that resemble, but for the most part, we're always looking for what we haven't done before. How do you balance, in terms of the community, you know, the open design contest and the blank loves threadless stuff or the different, you know, uh, partnerships? Um, how, how, how is that balanced or, or is there any sort of conflict at all? Is it pretty... Yeah, they're pretty much the same thing. I mean, either way, like technically, they're not contests. Um, the uh, the loves challenges, I guess, are a little bit more contest oriented because um, there's a, a start and end date. But um, for the most part, 
um, the loves challenges really only serve to um, sort of give a, th a theme, you know. So and it's just really the way that we do it isn't so much to um, serve the partner that we're working with. You know, if we work with, right. like, um, you know, way back when we work with, you know, anyone from Independent Film Channel, the bands or whoever, the idea isn't, to, isn't only to help them promote. It's really to um, have them help our community and um, basically give our community uh, something else to design for and then show them, you know, hey, we're being supportive of it. So, I mean, really, it's just about the themes, um, whereas Threadless is just a, hey, anytime you want, anything you want, just submit it. Um, this is a little, it's just a different challenge to like get people going. So it's pretty much the same thing. Cool. What's your favorite shirt? Oh, you gotta, gotta ask, or one of your favorites. Um, a lot of the older shirts are my favorites. Um, the newer shirts, I just kind of like take everything now. Um, so I guess it's like all, a lot of the new stuff, um, God, recently I would say, uh, I, there's a type T that's, uh, that says, um, it says a resist peer pressure, all the cool kids are doing it. <laughs> I like that shirt a lot. But uh, the, older, the older stuff, um, we have a bunch of designers from like way back in the day who became very big. Um, so um, like Nico Stumpo uh, did some shirts for us that are like my favorite and he went on to do Aiko and um, Tokidoki started out doing Threadless stuff and his shirt is one of my more favorites. So I guess I, there's nostalgia built into those. So like those are my favorites. What are, what, what's the plans for the future? I mean, you've got the store in Chicago. Um, you keep coming out with new lines or enhanced lines. Um, more and more shirts are getting released. What's, what's next? Um, I think, I mean, really, Without it sounding bland, it's kind of like more of the same. Um, you know, we're really trying to focus now on um, just like increasing core business. Um, last year, we had a pretty big surge in European sales, so um, a lot of it is focusing on uh, you know sort of keeping keeping those customers around and focusing on that. Um, you know, we'll probably be working on like multilingual versions of the site at some point or different things like that. Um, so it's really just doing things to make Threadless more accessible. Um, and also doing things that allow our community to grow faster as well. Um, you know, rather than having to sign up and be presented with a million things to do at the same time, which is kind of hard to digest, you know, we're working on ways to create a half step where people can kind of test the waters and then decide to go in while still signing up for an account and stuff like that. So just, you know, just really taking a look at our business and, and figuring out, like, what can be made better. You know, we always say that we never fool ourselves into thinking that we're the smartest people alive. So you know, just taking what we have and figuring out how to make it better. So you were, we were talking earlier and you were saying that, you know, you're talking about planning to make it easier for people to be able to kind of join the community and kind of step in. What do you think has been the most difficult part about managing or kind of overseeing such a large community of users? I mean, 900,000 users, how do you manage to keep people still, it's still feeling sort of the same without becoming, you know, MySpace? I just, we tend to not take huge steps. Um, and we also tend to pay attention to um, the most vocal users sort of as like the best subset of getting a feeling of what's going on. So, you know, really when you look at a community of 900,000 users, not all of them are blogging, not all of them, you know, there's, there's really all these different types of users. So, you know, by, by, mostly by paying attention to the blogs and seeing like what those core users are doing, the people who are buying and submitting and scoring and blogging, all these things, just kind of paying attention to um, what they're saying, because for the most part, they're going to be catching the most things and seeing, uh, like, being most vocal about what needs to be different. So, um, I mean, by basically, not by ignoring everyone else, but by paying attention um, to those people, we get a pretty good snapshot of what would probably be best for everyone else. And, you know, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but the nice thing about having the community that we have is we have a huge amount of trust, so if we, you know, think that there's something that they want, and we do it, and we, it turns out that we were wrong. We just apologize. We undo it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so. Okay, transparency seems to have been, have been an important part um, of you guys' core message, and do you think that's contributed to the level of trust the community um, has with you guys? Yeah, I mean, um, tr I mean, transparency is our entire business. So. Uh, there's, there's really no way to maintain the trust that we have without being totally transparent. And it, isn't, and it wasn't ever really like a business tactic. I would say nothing that we've done has really been a business tactic. We just kind of did things that made sense. And um, doing things online, there's just inherently there's transparency built into it. So it was just something we always did. So something that 
we're always going to do, and it just worked out, so we continue to do it. Are you bothered when people try to describe their next thing as something like Threadless, or, you know, it's like Threadless, but with X? Uh, not personally. I mean, um, I, mean I, I, would, I would rather have Threadless being used as a comparison point than not. I mean, I think it says that we're doing something right. Um, I mean, it's certainly, it's an, it's an honor to have people sort of, you know, look at us as, um, you know, the originators of doing, you know, crowdsourced apparel and different stuff like that. So it doesn't really bother me when it's a comparison point. I mean, it's just, it's natural. I mean, if it wasn't us, it would be somebody else. So it might as well, you know, be us. Did you initially, was, did you guys, you know, you started Threadless pretty early on. Did you see it evolving to this point, or has its evolution um, been a surprise? Uh, I would say it's been a pretty big surprise. Um, in the last couple of years, it hasn't really been a surprise um, because we've been working for a specific goal. But um, yeah, I mean, in the beginning, Threadless wasn't meant to be a business. Um, it was a side project. Uh, uh, Skinny Corp, our parent company, used to be a, uh, like a creative agency. So we would actually use Threadless as a way to prove to our potential clients that we knew how to build e-commerce websites. So it just, it just kind of like did its thing, um, which ultimately was the best thing for the business because we never relied on it to pay our bills. So we never were forced to make any decisions based upon, oh, well, this would be better for the community, but, um, but ultimately we need to make money, so we got to do X. You know? So we just, just kind of did its thing. And then around 2004, we noticed like, oh, hey, Threadless is making more money than we're making um, building websites. So, um, it just kind of, it was like an accidental business. And then from that, we just kind of looked backwards, looked at all the things we did right, you know, learned from the things that we did wrong, and just applied those, and so far, and that's kind of how it turned into a business. But it's been a big accident, basically. It's a little bit of intent here and there. A little bit of intent yeah. here and there. Right. Well, thank you so much for sitting down talking with thank me. Thank you. Fedless is awesome. We all love their stuff. Thank you.